Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of the Cinema Wave Podcast. We are back this week to talk to you guys about the third episode of HBO's The Penguin, based on Matt Reeves's Batman Crime Universe. I'm going to be one of your hosts. My name is Darren Scamone. I'm joined once again by Vinny Albano. Hello, hello. Um, we were just talking right before we started rolling, and this is probably – well, it's definitely my favorite episode of the series so mm. far. Um mm. And it takes a different approach. And we did discuss on last week's episode, where we covered the first two episodes of the series, um, the dynamic a little bit of, uh, between Oz and uh, Victor Aguilar, who is mm-hmm. a new character, not in canon, um, that was created by Lauren LaFranc, the showrunner uh, of the series. And this episode focuses heavily on his character and his backstory and what I loved about the open of this episode was that we get the callback to the big sort of flood that happens within the Batman. Um, And it really, again, opens up just the scope of what Matt Reeves is doing with Gotham. The one thing that I think is so interesting, and I was listening to um, HBO has their own like companion podcast, which they've been doing now for a couple of years with their big series. And I was listening to it and, uh, Lauren LaFranc was talking about how like people forget we're days removed from the events of the Batman Hmm. in this series. Um, And we've seen so much happen over three episodes. And I don't know how much technically is really in, in terms of of timeline, how much has, how much time has passed since Hmm. the end of the Batman, but it can't be more than a couple of weeks if the, at most. Um, so I thought it was really cool that they kind of sent us back to give us a look of Victor and his family and what that meant, uh, losing his family in the flood and his relationship with Graciela, who is his love interest, who is also in this episode. But what did you think about sort of the cult, the the open to the episode and, and having a focus on Renzi Feliz's character? Yeah, I really liked it because the one thing that I was scared um, about the show especially off the first two episodes is that that they were going to just ignore everything the significant events that happened in the batman like i i 100 percent agree and understand that they're trying to make this a penguin show right this is like batman's not going to show up it is solely focused on the penguin and they're not trying to be like an mcu like cameo fest or like easter egg fest no it's a grounded story but with that i also think that there needs to be respect and understanding of the world and the events that happened in the batman and how that coincides with the plot of this show and i i really really loved that opening um not only for victor's character establishing that ptsd that he has and seeing that uh insight within his character that we didn't previously get because i felt that like we were kind of heard of it but so far in the first two episodes we were hinted at his personality but not really understanding of him yet but now this episode grounds him it understands him and it also doesn't forget the impact of what has happened in this world prior with the batman so i just really really love that from the showrunners yeah and i agree and it also it's it's not like we didn't previously know. I think in the premiere episode when um, Oz starts being a little more friendly towards Victor, yeah. he asks him where he comes from and he grew up in the same district that he did or, or close to it. And he talks about that he lost everything in the flood. And it's not that that's not significant when you hear something like that and a relatable thing with the two characters, but seeing it unfold and seeing the panic in his eyes and realizing that his family is about to die, he loses everybody in the flood, or at yeah. least to our knowledge, we, we say. Um it, it it adds an extra layer of empathy for his character that we didn't previously have or we didn't previously know. Um, but the biggest thing in terms of this for me, besides the universe building that Reeves is doing, is really furthering, uh, furthering and establishing this relationship between Victor and Oz hmm. that I think um, I alluded to last week. I was like, it's like the Batman and Robin on the dark side of it. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. And Reeves has talked about... Um, Again, like we we have all these monikers and all these names for the Marvel Cinematic Universe and DC Studios and the Gun and Saffron Era, the DC EU, DCU, like all these things. Mm. Um, I think Matt Reeves has said that he wants this to be like a crime riddled universe. Like, and again, we talked about this last week where 
there's a lot more grounded approach to the way he's doing things. Hmm. But I think it's really cool how also with the show where we're not starting where like so many other things we've seen, obviously besides the Danny DeVito portrayal, but like Penguin as a character is this crime boss and he's a cigar chomping sort of like running a, a gang syndicate. And when we get our first reveal of Oz in the Batman, he's he's working for Falcone and he's not at the top of the heap. And so much of the show is going to be building that. But we're also getting the groundwork to seeing how he becomes that. And I think that it it's not because it's not necessarily an origin story. And the way they're playing with it, it's also not even though, like you said, it's, it's a show that is called The Penguin. But it's so reliant on the other characters so far, the other two main characters, which you could be. Victor Aguilar and Sophia Falcone, who also has a lot of great moments in this episode. Hmm. Um, but there's there's a couple of instances in this episode with Victor and Oz that I definitely want to pinpoint um, because Victor uh, eventually Oz um, wants Victor to drive him and Sophia to um, meet with the triads. And Sophia says, no, like you're going to drive like, sorry, Victor, you're sitting this one out. He invites Graciela to uh, Oz's apartment and they're hanging out and he has an opportunity to take his money and run. Literally, he can take the money he just got from Oz and he can go to California with the love of his life and he could start new. He could start fresh. He's got no family. She's got no family. Yeah. Um and it's interesting because part of him you you see the dynamic of him saying, "I think that Oz is going to kill me if I leave." But then there's the other side of it where he's like, "I think he likes having me around." And you see that psychology which plays off of the opening scene where he talks to his father and he's like, "Dad, like you're a great chef. You could have more than just this life as a mechanic. And it plays into the later conversation that we see at the club between Oz and Victor and this play on like the American dream and what it, what it means to like make it in the world hmm. and that allegory on just like what it is to, to, to succeed. Right. What did you think about all the alluding to that and the conversations that were had between Victor and Oz throughout the episode? Yeah. I, I think that this episode is incontestant of being my favorite thus far with the first one all of that was just so solid i think it, it's what grounds the episode and what makes it so good that probably my favorite scene in this episode is the scene at the restaurant when they're sitting down and they're talking and it's just such a heart to heart it's like wow this is like this is a villain that we're watching and yet he is expressing such real emotion, right? Although with a bit of a twisted perspective, you know, how he, he claims that, oh, if you, if you really want to make it, then, you know, you got to do some unethical things. But you understand where he's coming from. Although a, a flawed perspective, you do understand where he's coming from, taking in part even Victor's story that he's telling him, telling him about his father, how his father was a mechanic, but at heart was a chef and all of that. That was one of my favorite scenes. It just, it felt so real for a character that is so um, extraordinary, mm -hmm. you know? So I, I really, I really liked it. I honestly, I think all of that, every scene between them two in this is is you know like i said makes the episode yeah and it's indicative of the relationship that's being built between the two of them because the scene you're talking about happens before like kind of the last the last talk that they have they have like three it, it's it's like a three-pronged thing they have three yeah. different conversations throughout this episode that all represent different things hmm. the first one is back at oz's house before him and sophia go to meet with the triads and uh, he goes he goes we haven't even discussed salary yet and he makes his kid feel um like like he's more he's more than than he's ever been before and he uh he goes anything you need you you just tell me what you need and i'll give it to you and he makes the joke what he says it jokingly but he's like i'll take i want my salary to be two thousand and he goes that's the way to do it and you see this like this like sort of sparkle in his eye for the first time victor yeah. like especially since losing his family where he feels he feels seen he feels like he's a part of something um, and it, it's reminiscent of the conversation that Oz has with him early in the season. And also, which is why I love the breadcrumbs that are being laid throughout the show between, I mean, I think everybody is like a master in the show in terms of like the direction and the show running and the writing and Reeves with the producing, like 
it's just such a strong show. Yeah. It reminds me of how much I disliked House of the Dragon when we were talking about it because I'm like, I felt like so many things went wrong with this. This is just tight. Mm-hmm. Um, but it reminds me even of the of that crucial conversation that leads to Carmine's um not Carmine, um uh Arthur's death, where uh Oz is talking about just being enamored with this old gangster that used to run Gotham when he was Are you a talking kid. About Alberto's death. Alberto, yeah, 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 what did I say? I said Arthur, Arthur I apologize. Yeah. Alberto Falcone's death. Hmm. Um and he's talking about like seeing this guy at the, at the center of the parade and he always wanted to be that. Hmm. And it, it's it's just it's the same mentality, right? It's just he wanted to be more than what he was and and we're going to get flashbacks. We see it in the trailers yeah. of Oz eventually. Um but I love how it all sort of plays within one another. Hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. I I agree. I feel that for me, Oz is such a captivating character. Um, I think even I'm going to move the conversation towards the end of the episode. Mm-hmm. Right? The ending really encapsulates Oz's character and also is a crazy ending. What a cliffhanger. Yeah. yeah. Right. Um, because he's playing both crime families. And then it is revealed through the both crime families at the same time. Sophia is there as well as the Maronis that he's playing them. Mm -hmm. And then Victor comes in and, you know, kills that guy and and, uh, they hop in the car and they drive out of there. But I love how his character is such a, uh, he has, it's, it's so complicated that I can't really put it into a simple phrasing. Mm -hmm. But there's so many layers to him, right? He's this, he knows exactly what's to say at the right time. Sophie even see, says that word for word in, in this yeah, episode. Yeah. Like, oh, you know what to say. Like, you always have the right thing to say. Uh, he's almost an actor, right? He's almost uh, balancing on this tightrope all the time. And it is so fascinating um, to watch and to watch it unfold within this plot i'm curious where it's gonna go from here yeah because i feel this entire episode aside from victor's perspective was all about establishing sophia and oz as like yo they're being in cahoots yeah they're like together now like they're working they're clicking it off like you know they're with the with the triads they're kind of like they they're on the same page about things yeah and then it just Falls. Well, we also got a lot of reveals to the past, like the the past of their relationship, right? And yeah. Sophia, uh, there's a lot of the beginning of the episode is a lot of sort of pointed responses towards um, Oz and being like, "Well, you, like you remember how you used to be my driver," mm. and like kind of putting him down in a way. Um, and you get a moment in this episode too, which I think because of how many things happen in this episode. And it's really it's it's indicative again of, of just the writing of the show and how well it's produced. Like, there's not a lot of action in this episode until the finale, hmm. like until the end of the episode, and it's still so captivating. Like the whole entire time, which you oh, talked yeah. about, it's it's a credit to the performances and the writing and all of it. But um, you see that moment again where he gets called a penguin by uh, Viti, and he snaps and he sticks yeah. the phone in his mouth, and it's revealing to Sophia that she understands psychologically what's gonna what's gonna set this guy off and i think that's telling i think it's gonna come back at some point obviously by the end of the series um but you're right we get we get this moment at the end of the episode um where also victor has to make a choice he needs to decide whether or not he's good because when he first steals oz's car after the interaction they have in the restroom which i want to return to the club sequence in a little bit too because the the um editing of that sequence was was awesome and the oh, ptsd yeah. and the yeah. trauma um but he leaves in he leaves frantically and he leaves upset and and rightfully so based on having a gun pointed at him but there's a lot of legitimacy to what oz is saying he's like you feel that i you you feel that i'm trapping you like this that i'm i'm like yeah you don't need to stay here i don't need you like i'm here to try to which which at the same time he kind of does need him you know, 
but he's also playing it where he's like, you know, like you were nothing before you met me and like, you're not going to be anything if you leave me. But you know what? I don't have a gun to your head. Like, but do you want that? Is that really what you want? Like, is that how you want to feel? Is that how I make you feel? Um, and the relationship, I'm really excited. I don't know if you saw at the end, but the preview for next week's episode is, uh, it seems like it's at least heavy. If it's not the whole episode, it's heavy in flashback hmm. for Sophia and the relationship that came previously with Sophia and Oz and establishing her as the hangman. Hmm. Um, and it gets revealed in this episode that Oz was a big part of the reason she gets sent to Arkham. Um, so it's interesting to see where we end on this episode because I think we still have, do you know how many episodes the show is? I think it's eight episodes. Eight, eight. I, yeah, so I we're not even, well, no, next week we'll be at the mid season. Mm. Um, and if it's a full flashback, then that'll give them time. Right. Mm. And we know we're still going to get flashbacks from, from Oz and hopefully his relationship with his mother, because that's a character as much as I love this episode, I'm like missing her week to week. It's like, yeah. whenever she's not there, you could feel the weight of her not being there. Um, but there's just so much to chew on in this episode and those relationships and him and Sophia, like you talked about, they're going in one direction where they're having these these conversations about uh, running the business together. And, you know, there's the, even that scene when um, they're meeting with like the gangster who I guess is sort of the middleman for the triads. And he just decides to do the VD thing right on the spot. And you see Sophia look at him like, what are you doing? Hmm. Like, you're not even talking to me. I'm the family. And you're now going against the family to it's as clear as day that if you're around Oz as much as she is, and she has been that he's going to do anything he can to leap the the order. You know what I mean? Like he wants to run the family yeah. and he wants to yeah. run the city. So I'm interested to see, do you have any theories or, or mm. your perspective on sort of the relationship between him and Sophia and maybe even that conversation they have about her getting sent to Arkham mm. and things like that? Yeah. Whew. It's, it's a, it's heavy um i find sophia's character to be really fascinating uh i mean you basically covered all the bases but she their whole relationship and their whole dynamic is so captivating where she she's just so intelligent like she knows like she like you mentioned like she catches on to his bullshit every time and he I think as an audience, we're kind of led to believe that, like, he's able to calm her down and be like, oh, no, I'm not bullshitting. But I think she she obviously still knows that he's bullshitting, mm -hmm. right? So it is this, like I mentioned with his character, it's that he's always walking on a tightrope, which I don't know if this was intentional, but, like, the penguin, right? Like, the physical look of the penguin he's a big guy he has a limp right mm -hmm. he's not balanced yeah. at all so maybe that was kind of almost like a metaphor in a way right mm -hmm. where he he is trying to like tiptoe on this and teeter totter in, into yeah. this world and yeah. and playing it both sides with the falcons and um and the maronis where uh, there's a lot we still have to see sort of unfold yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. I think that there's still a lot of answers and things like that. Do you think, and I know we're not, we could theorize all we want, which is just a question, your personal, if you have a thought on it. Uh, do you think one of those two characters are dead by the end of the season? Yes, 100%. And do you I, have a theory or a prediction on who that would be? Sophia. Okay. Uh, I, however, I was thinking about it. I'm like, you know, I could see them having the series end with Oz's death. But I don't think that's appropriate because Matt Reeves was saying how this is a story to his rise of power. Mm. And it could be like a Scarface type of situation where we see his rise of power and then he can't handle it at the top and then boom, you know, dies. Yeah. But his, you know, we started this episode talking about the significance of the world and the characters in the world. How much like a character like the Riddler affected someone like victor and that butterfly effect it would be such a missed opportunity to kill him off by the end of the series like i think that it would benefit everything whatever spin-off they want to make whatever other projects batman part two within this world 
they need to keep him alive because it keeps the butterfly effect going and it keeps you know he's gonna affect another character and then we'll have like a victor part two or like you know etc cetera, etc cetera. like um this world stands on the actions of these characters and then it affects this character and this character and this character right and it's a web and that's how a story unfolds right let's that onion um but sophia you don't need her alive by the end of the series so uh, from a logical perspective i think sophia's gonna die um oz might die but i don't think it's a smart idea for, for uh, as coming from a writing perspective especially since we know there's sequels coming up and and the penguin of a significance of his character i don't think it would be smart to have him die i agree no. i think i'm i'm I also feel like Sophia could die, but part of me is leaning towards maybe seeing one of them die in the Batman part two. Hmm. Um, I mean, they're both so great, but I do agree. There's something about wanting to see that full blown version of Oz and what that's going to look like and, and sort of running the streets and, and see how that has to be something additionally that Bruce has to deal with. I mean, he deals with the, with the low level crime, on top of the Riddler stuff, you see it a little bit in uh, in the Batman when he's talk. Um, he's dealing in the clubs with Catwoman and things like that. And I'm curious if we get more into that relationship too, because we know that um, Catwoman is also um, the daughter of um, of Falcone. Falcone. Yeah. So I wonder if we get something maybe where she lives and we get an interaction between Sophia and Catwoman. Which I think would be really interesting. Yeah, yeah. And I'm curious to see what that would look like. Yeah, I I, I remember we talked about that last episode, uh, where I want to really see that. Yeah. Right, because so uh, Catwoman's the illegitimate daughter, mm -hmm. so it'd be an interesting dynamic, uh, especially since also, to our knowledge, Catwoman was the last. Yeah, Catwoman is the last person to interact with Carmine before he died, mm -hmm. aside from like the police. And yeah, that. yeah whole shenanigans but like she literally was going in batman she was going out to kill carmine so that could play an interesting dynamic if that truth comes out and those two characters interact in a way like that um going into a different topic this might be the comic book nerd in me right mm -hmm. speculating speculating and i don't know if speculation would be the appropriate thing to do for such a grounded show and it might not be anything right but bliss as a drug we're the, introduced to now the next version of the drops essentially mm. like drops were so addictive and now bliss is this new party drug that they introduced it's grown from the spores of these mushrooms bleeding fungi yeah, 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 yeah. and i immediately thought scarecrow yeah so i think i brought that up last week maybe too with the therapist with the therapist yeah right. and and the sort of um the halluc uh not the hallucinogenics it's it's more of like um what well, what's the hallucinations yeah, it, yeah yeah it's the hallucinations that are happening with Theo Rossi's character um and it's weird that we get like a look at him and then we don't see him again mm -hmm. and at the same time we do and I think it's actually good speculation from you and I haven't thought about it cuz I haven't been seeing that anywhere mm -hmm. but the other part of it is that she talks about how she got access to bliss in Arkham. Hmm. Uh, and this is her therapist, which we, I don't know if we get a look at him in Arkham with her. I think it just might be, but it might be like, it, it's never revealed necessarily in episode two, if those sessions are in Arkham or not. Correct. Cause we're uh, also questioning whether or not they're real or not. If she's having them in a dream. Yeah. So in episode two, they were like in her living room or like at the therapist's office. And that light was, like, inducing a hallucination. So, y they, I don't know if that particular therapist worked with her in mm -hmm. Arkham. I'm not sure. But. Because that also could, could lead up to maybe him being the one that initially got her the drugs. Yeah. And got her the treatment, which could mean, again, Theo Rossi might be eventually playing this version of Scarecrow, which I think would be super interesting. Yeah. Um... Just the way that Reeves is designing this universe from the ground up, mm. I think is so respectful to the lore, but also understanding that he wants to do it in his own way where mm. it doesn't feel as fantastical like we talked about. Um, 
are you getting more on board? Do you think after this week's episode, or are you still on the same level with all that stuff? I'm on board. I'm on board. I think it's just, it's, it's, a like as a cop, like, I feel like it's, it's like ingrained within me now after being a part of the MCU and just the comic book, like movies all you know, recently it's ingrained in me to be like, Oh, that has to be an Easter egg to this, but it might not be anything right. Like, uh, in the Batman, he shoots up the adrenaline into his leg and people were like, Oh my God, that's venom. Like that's for like Bane. So like, oh, that means uh, Batman's going to get a venom addiction and then Bane is going to be in part two. Uh, but then Matt Reeves confirmed that it was just regular adrenaline. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, I'm on board with this world. Like, I think this world is great. Like, I'm I'm excited to see what else comes. Are, are they still making the Arkham Asylum spinoff? So I or? think the initial plan was that Terrence Winter was going to come in and do a Gotham PD show. Okay. And then they reworked it into an Arkham show. Hmm. And then it got shelved. But now apparently the development is back on for it. But I don't know which version of that we're going to see. Yeah. Um, I think for... I feel like we're probably going to get the Gotham PD version um, of the show. Which I think is going to be like kind of... Not a... Proce- excuse me. Not a procedural. But just dealing with the inner workings of the police department in Gotham. Um this is also just speculative on my part, but Jeffrey Wright who plays commissioner Gordon has a very strong relationship with HBO and Warner mm-hmm. brothers. He was in Westworld. He was in boardwalk empire. He's been in a bunch of things on HBO. Yeah. So I could see them being able to bring him back on to play Gordon and lead a show like that kind of be relatively easy. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Um, and I think it also keeps in line with what they're trying to do. Like I, I, I am interested to see what that like, that rogues gallery in Arkham would look like necessarily in, yeah. in, I mean, I think, I feel like that's the thing that all comic fans want to see. You know what I mean? Like everyone's like, we want to see like yeah. what Arkham really looks like. And you thought they were going to do that with Joker folly. You do, but obviously that didn't wind up happening. But, right. um, I'm, I think that if they wind up going back in development with another show, I think the Gotham PD route is more in the way they're going to go to also keep like the crime element of it you know what i mean yeah arkham would do the same thing but it would have more of a psychological feel yeah what i find so cool about that is it's a crime-based uh world that they're building but it's two perspectives right Mm -hmm. so like even the batman right we're seeing uh the uh we're seeing if you like take a spectrum from left to right right and you have like full-on anarchy crime and then like full on like uh systematic justice like police and whatnot and then like batman i wouldn't say is all the way to the right but he's a vigilante so he's kind of there um and we're seeing that noir based like procedural tropes within the batman and through that perspective and then we take it to the penguin where it's all strictly through the criminal's perspective and then we see we see we empathize with the criminals and we understand why they're doing it and like, i don't know i'm just like that popped in my head i'm like i find that so fascinating that we're getting two pers because typically thus far in all of the batman movies we've only been seeing it through the eyes of the police or batman right so we're only seeing it through like a vigilante's view or a very systematic uh justice type of view mm-hmm. um which there's a lot of nuance that is missed out on that. But now with the penguin and like, uh, if they make an Arkham show, if they make a PD show, you get some more nuance <clears throat> that is not explored upon within like the singular project. Yeah. I think also if we get a PD show, I think that's the instance in where we maybe get a Batman cameo. Yeah. Because yeah. you see him interacting with the police and what that might mean. And again, I think it it's, does a great, you do a great job of explaining like, those different perspectives that it's giving us the the fact that we are it, like, it's, I know people have been saying Sopranos, which, which I understand completely because it deals in, in a mob family and it takes place in, I mean, it takes place in New Jersey, mm. which we talked about last week yeah, as yeah. it does the Sopranos, but there's so many elements of like Heisenberg to mm. Oz that you see. Um, and just, it's crazy because it's not like you empathize completely with Oz 
but seeing the way he's treated and you understand the again like going back to the beginning of this episode like the relationship between him and victor is so crucial to his character and to this story and if that's not there i don't know if the if it if it holds true the same way Hmm. like if you feel for oz the same way if you're like of course colin farrell is tremendous in the role you saw that in in the first batman but if this show doesn't exist you look at him just as he was in the batman and now there's a much deeper understanding of who he is why he does what he does how he feels about the world all those kinds of things. And I think peeling back those layers week by week is what is so like, it's just, it's just great. It's, it's really, really great television hmm. that I feel like we've been missing like yeah. all year. Like the only show um, X-Men 97, of course we love um, um, and Shogun are like the two that stand out mostly to me this year where I'm like week to week, I'm like captivated or like when um, I was just excited to watch the next episode every time. Yeah. And yeah. Penguin, I was saying to you before we started recording, I was like on the edge of my seat this whole episode. And the funny thing about that, like I said before, is that there's not a lot of action mm. in this episode. So much of it is just based in those really concrete conversations that are being had between two characters. And some people might look at that as boring but it's like it's what brings us back every single week to these shows that are if, if it's done well, if it's written really well, then you're excited for the next episode. You're excited to see where they go. And it's why the, the cliffhanger works so well at the end of this episode, because you realize you're building this relationship the whole entire time with Sophia and Oz. And then you get this moment where he goes, just leave her hmm. after yeah. he had this conversation where he's like, I feel sorry for doing what I did to you. And I want to be there to see you on top. And then he gets put in a corner and he's like, forget it. Go. Just drive. Yeah. Great job, yeah. Victor. Go. <laughs> yeah. And it's yeah. like, what is about to happen? Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. No, I you I mean, you basically said everything. You nailed it. Um I agree. I mean, this episode entirely was just a banger. I don't I don't really have much else to say, to be honest. Yeah, the only but... sequence I want to cover, because we didn't touch upon it hmm. uh, from a technical perspective. Yeah, the club is, is the club scene, hmm. which is one of my favorite scenes probably of the year. Mm. Uh, and it's, it's just done so effectively where uh, you get, obviously, like we said, at the beginning of the episode, you, you get the, um, the 360 of Victor looking around and seeing Gotham and these explosions and the flooding happening and, and destroying the city or his, his section of the city, I guess. And uh, he's having these, these callbacks when there's flashes in the club as he's uh, the bag man, they call him. He's like basically the middleman distributor of the drugs that are uh, being sold by the prostitutes in Oz's club. I think it's Oz's club, right? Oh, it was the The triads Triads club, Club. the triads club. Um, And he's basically running point that night, Oz. And he's like, he's like, this is who you got to go to. And uh, he's seeing the flashes um, from the lights and the music. And he's getting this like crazy PTSD and you get this unbelievable sequence. Mm. Um, And it's just, again, like just laying the groundwork for everything it's so nice to see a show where they care i think that's what makes this show so near and dear to me right now is that yeah it's so obvious that the showrunner and uh lauren Lef- lefranc and matt reeves and craig zobel and the editors and the, that they care about this world they care about the characters like when you first enter the club you see the um you see like the scrim and like the dancers like behind it as the shadows and during that PTSD sequence, you see like that mirrored like rapidly with human bodies underwater. Yeah. In Gotham. Yeah. So I don't know if there was something you wanted to speak to in particular about that sequence or how you felt about that sequence in general. Yeah. For me, uh, technically, what I think makes the PTSD a, a panic attack so good even is because we're put through the perspective of Victor. And I don't know about you. But when the fr- explosions first started going off, you didn't. I didn't know if they were real, real. or fake. I 100%. thought they were real. And I was yeah. like, what? Wait, what? Wait. And then, but the fact that I was questioning if they were real or not, mm. and the fact that I thought they were real at first, literally homes in and, and, and proves that that scene works. 100%. Because we're through the perspective of Victor and he doesn't know if it's real or not. Because when that panic attack, your brain is going crazy and you're, 
it's like whoa 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 and then that that you have that great masking uh effect where like the camera turns with him and then like w the wall be just that side of where he's looking is just the flood um and like you even mentioned that juxtaposition of the bodies underwater with the dancers behind the scrim it works so well i always am fascinated i remember i was talking with another filmmaker friend of mine and we were just talking about how filmmaking in and of itself can be very it can be a very simple art but within the simplicity is what makes it so good right like editing a simple hard cut from one image to another and the juxtaposition that that creates your brain without you don't have to say any words you don't have to tell the audience anything that simple hard cut between those two images and that contrast communicates to us our human language we just understand oh that means this or oh that, and it perceives a certain emotion and perceives a message that is so powerful i just i'm fascinated with the idea of editing uh as a as a technical element and how that can it, it is a language right and speaking to you and the, that club sequence and that ptsd attack exactly nails the art of editing i think right because like you mentioned that juxtaposition of those two images all they're not it's not like a it gets a little flashy towards the end they do like a little like uh almost like a slow shutter blur type mm -hmm. effect but it's usually just like cut 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 like hard cut to another image that is similar to this image but it portrays a certain emotion that hits you right there yeah i just i don't know i'm fine no i so i totally i yeah. totally agree and i don't yeah. even i wouldn't be able to put it in better words than you just did i think that it's it speaks to the talent of the editors yeah. um and also just the ability to take a sequence like that and make you feel as the viewer that one thing is happening while also totally being in victor's shoes and understanding exactly what he is feeling in that moment mm. by the way that they do the edit so I mean, all in all, we obviously, we love this episode. This is probably, like we said, it's in contention for your favorite episode of the season. It's definitely my favorite episode of the season thus far. Um, um, again, we, we think it's eight episodes, the series, um, or the season. I don't know if we're going to get a season two. I guess we'll wait and see. Mm. Um, but so next week should be the mid-season uh, finale. Zach, unfortunately, is has just been so busy. He's not going to be able to be on... A lot of these episodes of the penguin with us but we hope you guys have enjoyed the conversations that Vinny and i have been able to have with you guys through the first two weeks we're obviously going to continue to cover it we're loving the show on hbo let us know in the comments what your guys thoughts are on the penguin thus far are you guys loving it do you think colin farrell is doing an unbelievable job like we do think he'll get emmy nominated Kristen miliati also great and renzi feliz in this episode probably the mvp mm. as great as the episode is yeah. um so many great things also be sure to put your theories in the comments you guys think Theo Rossi's character may be Scarecrow? Do you think that um, there's a chance that we get a Catwoman um, reveal by the end of the season or we get her in a flashback or anything? Who knows? Next week, we got Sophia Falcone's flashback episode, it seems like. So we'll definitely be back to talk about that. And also, you guys can like this video if you can. You can subscribe to us. We have the Culture Wave Media Network. We cover all things film and TV. All our social media stuff is right below me and also in the description. And uh, we got a lot more stuff to come for you guys. So just signing off, I am Darian Scalamoni. I'm Vinny Albano. And we'll see you guys next time. This is The Culture.